Wednesday of the 34th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his lords, with whom he drank. Under the influence of the wine, he ordered the gold and silver vessels, which Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem, to be brought in so that the king, his lords, his wives, and his entertainers might drink from them. When the gold and silver vessels taken from the house of God in Jerusalem had been brought in, and while the king, his lords, his wives, and his entertainers were drinking wine from them, they praised their gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. Suddenly, opposite the lampstand, the fingers of a human hand appeared, writing on the plaster of the wall in the king's palace. When the king saw the wrist and hand that wrote, his face blanched. His thoughts terrified him, his hip joints shook, and his knees knocked. Then Daniel was brought into the presence of the king. The king asked him, Are you Daniel? the Jewish exile, whom my father, the king, brought from Judah? I have heard that the Spirit of God is in you, that you possess brilliant knowledge and extraordinary wisdom. I have heard that you can interpret dreams and solve difficulties. If you are able to read the writing and tell me what it means, you shall be clothed in purple, wear a gold collar about your neck and be third in the government of the kingdom. Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts, or give your presents to someone else, but the writing I will read for you, O king, and tell you what it means. You have rebelled against the Lord of heaven. You had the vessels of his temple brought before you, so that you and your nobles, your wives and your entertainers might drink wine from them and you praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, that neither see nor hear nor have intelligence. But the God, in whose hand is your life breath, and the whole course of your life, you did not glorify. By him were the wrist and hand sent, and the writing set down. This is the writing that was inscribed, Mene, Teco, and Perez. These words mean, Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and put an end to it. Teco, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Sun and moon, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Stars of heaven, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Every shower and dew bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. All you winds bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Fire and heat bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Cold and chill, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowd, They will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons. And they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand. 
For I shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Daniel 5, 1 to 6, 13 to 14, 16 to 17, and 23 to 28. King Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, throws a party at which he uses the sacred vessels from Jerusalem as drinking cups. Now realize a lot of the details in these stories are a little bit inaccurate because they're writing as if it occurred in the court of Babylon in the 500s BC but they're actually writing this down about 175 BC. So after 300 years, a lot of the information got fuzzy. The historic details are not quite right. What's important is the lesson to be learned from these various stories. In this case, a hand writes something on the wall. Daniel, who speaks in the spirit of the Lord, is able to interpret it. And he says that it says, Mene Tekel Perez. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and put an end to it. Tekel, you've been weighed in the scales and found wanting. Pedas, your kingdom's been divided among the Medes and the Persians. That the kingdom that he is ruling, which seems omnipotent, would fall very soon. And this was God's judgment. And again, remember, the historic details of this are a bit fuzzy. The simple message is that these people committed hubris. They committed a sin against the God of Israel by desecrating these vessels. Therefore, they would pay the price. The Gospel is from Luke 21, 12 to 19. It's a prediction that the people would suffer persecution. Remember, by the time Luke is writing his Gospel, 85 AD, this has already come true. People would be handed over by their brothers, relatives, friends, and some would be put to death. The people, however, were to trust. They weren't to prepare a defense because God would give them a defense through the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, they must persevere because not a hair on their head would be destroyed. The basic message is they will kill you, but they'll never harm you. That if you hold on to the Lord, the Lord will be there for you. Even if it means death, you will be one with the Lord, and they will not have conquered you. This is important to remember because it's not that we're thrown into prison, but we suffer an everyday persecution. St. Therese of Lisieux called it the martyrdom of pinpricks, everyday life. And we have to try to continue to trust in the providence of the Lord, trust that if we hold on to him, he will be one with us, even in the midst of the everyday craziness of life. And may God bless us.